It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Dave dislikes index investing. Yeah, you know, I, I think there's a quote, and you pulled this from – this is a blog on, on Dave's website, right? Oh, it's he, on Chris Hogan's. On Chris's website. It says, yep. uh, I recommend front-load funds. With this type of fund, you pay fees and commissions up front when you make your investment. This approach allows your money to grow without being bogged down by expensive management fees. Also, pay attention to the fund's expense ratio. A ratio higher than 1% is considered expensive. Well, we know. I mean – when you're talking about 1% internal operating expenses, that hasn't been the case since the 90s. That doesn't just sound expensive to me. That sounds really, really expensive. It's a little outdated because we know index investing has revolutionized. There has been a price war that's been going on, and you, the consumer, have been the beneficiaries of this. And a big driver of that is index investing. So we think the solution actually is... Index investing is a powerful tool for wealth building. Yeah, and that's if you look at how we manage money to bound wealth, how we've been doing it for decades now, uh, we love taking advantage of index funds. We, in our opinion, there are some clear advantages to using indexes, but I don't think that we're the only ones who figured this out. Well, I was worried because, look, there is no doubt you just saw it, 950 employees. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they are huge. Dave, there's no doubt you can't – the good that he's doing is awesome – but I think a lot of people would say, what do you guys know? Dave is super successful. Who sure. are you to question? And that's why I was like, is there a third party? Is there a source to show that the system is changing? Yep. The whole world is. And here's what we found. If you look at cash flows, meaning how much money is inflowing into investments versus how much money is coming out of investing, this graphic will blow your mind. I think from 2010 all the way until 2019, there has been an outflow from actively managed funds of about $1.8 trillion that has flown into indexes. So when you talk about that sum of money, that large, something must be changing, something must be shifting. And you can see it's leaving the active management and it's going into the passive so indices. So here's what we've been creating content since 2006. When I first started doing index investing shows, I used to be able to headline it and be like, the best investment that only 50% of investors yeah. have or you know or something or 30% of investors now it's getting to where i think a lot of you guys have figured out index investing is pretty good and let us tell you the three key benefits and we'll do a deep dive on each one of these to index investing yep so the very first is it generally tends to be more tax efficient. And we talk about tax efficiency inside of index investing. The real thing that we're talking about is annual turnover that happens inside of the fund cuz as you know, a mutual fund or an ETF is really just a bucket of holdings with a bunch of underlying stocks under, underneath. So if you wanted to have like the S&P 500, rather than having to go buy all 500 different companies, you can just buy one mutual fund. And inside that mutual fund is housed all of those companies. Well, actively managed funds do the same thing. They're trying to pick and choose what companies you're buying, what companies you're owning inside of the fund. Well, when they do that, they are generating turnover inside of the portfolio. Yeah, I think, I mean, if you think of this from a human nature standpoint, an active manager is going to feel like he's got to be doing something sure. to earn his keep. So you go see lots of buying and selling. Every time you buy and sell, just like you have to pay taxes when you buy and sell individually yourself, so does your institutional manager. So th- those transactions cost money, That's they right. cost taxes. Index funds, by their sheer design, I mean, you hear about the rumor right now, Tesla might be joining the S&P 500. They'll drop, meaning that they'll drop some other old-timer type stock that's kind of become outdated. You know, think about it like Kodak. Sure. It used to be an S&P 500. Yep. As people don't use, you know, that, that type of yeah. technology, it falls off new stuff. But it's only a few things change. So it's very low transactions, very few trades. And we took it a step further. We actually did a show, our index show we did a while back, we went a deep dive on this. We really nerded out. So if you like this, go a deeper dive with us. And that we talked about turnover ratio. We talked about also just the tax efficiency. And we used the largest holdings out there. We used the Vanguard S&P 500. Mm-hmm. And we also used the Growth Fund of America, which yep. is American funds. And then I believe we used the Contra the Fund. The Fidelity Contra Fund. And what we said is, based on the turnover that's taking place in the portfolio, how much performance is lost to that tax drag. And that's actually called the tax cost ratio. And what we found is if you look at this over a one-year, five-year, 10-year basis, you can see like American Funds Growth Fund of America 
actually loses about 1.9% per year to tax cost over a five-year time period. That number is about 1.4% over the 10-year period. So, and then you look at the, 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 if you look at the Vanguard 500 index, which is the S and P 500, at a minimum, it's going to be half, meaning it's only going to have a half. It's going to be a half a percent cheaper, and but it very well could be over one percent right. annual performance difference. So, tax efficiency definitely has an impact on your performance. So, don't think we're saying, hey, managers just are horrible. It's also in just how these things are designed, and you need to understand what components go into total performance. It's how much you keep after taxes, fees, and everything else. So not only uh, are indexes, in our opinion, more tax efficient, we found just frankly, it is a cheaper way to invest. If the two things that you can control inside your investment portfolio are the taxes you pay and the fees you pay, and we know that they're more tax efficient, we need to then point our attention to what are the fees that we're paying inside of the funds we're investing in. So I had, because I've shared with you guys, I've been doing this long enough. I've been managing money since the 90s. Internal operating expenses when I came out were around 1.5%. Oh. You heard in Dave's advice, he was talking about making sure your internal expenses are below 1%. Now right. I realize Dave's had this advice for a while, so I'm not saying that he was wrong when he designed it. It's just that I think things have evolved and changed mm -hmm. to a degree the averages have been coming down naturally. And I would say that has a lot to do with the pressure of all the flows coming out of active management mm -hmm. going into index investing that the active managers have woken up and go, uh-oh, yep. we better get serious and sharpen the pencils because look at where the average internal expenses are, Bo. Yeah, so if we look at uh, three different types of funds, just domestic equity here in the U.S., uh, world equity, international funds, and then just looking at like bond or hybrid funds, you can see that the Average cost, internal expense of an actively managed domestic fund is about 1.12% right now. But the average index fund that's domestically that's domestic equity is only about 0.42%. And if you think about it, because you see that, you're like, what, is, what does that mean, mm -hmm. really? If you were investing $1,000, that would be on that 1.12. You can see that that quickly could add up to you know, four dollars and I mean that could add up to, you know, ten dollars, eleven dollars and twenty cents. Twenty cents, right? Um, whereas on the index fund, that's talking about four dollars and twenty cents mm -hmm. out of your thousand. Yep. Here's the dirty little secret: index funds have actually gotten a lot cheaper than what this is showing us because there's a lot of holding companies. If you think about broker dealers mm -hmm. and others that are trying to keep up, but they just they if you just go to direct, if way. you go to direct like Vanguard, Fidelity. The internal expenses of their index funds are 0.01. So That's we're right. talking about on $1,000, instead of it being $4.20, it's a dime. Yep. Point, point one. one. So that's a dime. So, I mean, there is a lot of money left on the table that these poor funds, these poor active managers, you kind of feel sorry for them. They have to overcome all these things before they can just keep up with the sheer design and nature of index investing. So you're probably saying, okay, I hear you, right? Uh, yeah, indices may be more tax efficient and uh, indices may be a cheaper way to invest, but the reason that people use active managers is because they can outperform. They have the magic sauce. They know what is required to go out there and beat the market. So what we actually found is that when you look at long-term investment performance, our opinion, and the facts substantiate this, is that indices have better long-term performance. Yeah, we've talked about the efficiency of the markets is pretty incredible. I want you to understand this, guys. If there are only 500 large cap stocks, U.S. companies, 500 the largest, you know who they are, Walmart, the Home Depots, your Googles, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you're looking at. There's only 500 of them, yet you can throw rocks and hit financial advisors. People are in your grocery stores, they're in your banks. These guys are everywhere, these gals too. Yep. And the thing is, is that how can they, with technology and information flowing so freely, how does the guy down the street know any more than just how efficient the market and the information makes it out there to the public? I don't think it can. Yep. I, I think it's just impossible for it to keep up. And the data supports this because guess what we have found, guys? If you're trying to figure out, is the manager that much better? Because they already have to overcome the taxes. They have to overcome the fees. Surely they're making great decisions. And when we have prospects and they go, hey, can you beat the S&P 500? I go, 
Nope. No, that's not, not even my do. goal. We're financial planners. We're helped to, here to help you navigate the financial world and make sure risk adjusted, you're getting the best rate of return possible. But we're not trying to beat the markets because the data shows that's practically impossible. Hit them with the data. Bro. So every year Spiva comes out with a study and this is from the 2020 data. And this is what they found over a 15 year period. 87.7% of active managers in the U.S. large cap space underperform the index. Underperform. Underperform the index. If you look at mid cap, 82.2% of active managers underperformed their stated index. If you look at small cap, 82.2% underperformed their active index. And then if you look at international, 87.8% of active managers underperform their index. So the four asset class categories that Dave is suggesting you utilize, it is very, very difficult to pick who the top manager is going to be on a consistent basis over any meaningful period of time. I can already hear the whispers. Somebody's like, wait a minute, guys, you're missing it. That means there's a chance because there's, there is so a, 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 a chance. there is definitely there's at least a 12 to 13 percent chance I'm going to choose that winner. Here's the other dirty little secret: if you take the 12 or 13 percent that win in that single year versus the index, they don't have a consistency. That's meaning right. that if they fall off in year two, year three, year four, meaning they might beat the uh, the index one year, but they don't consistently. Beat the index. That's a problem. Guys, save yourself a lot of heartache. The index is going to be the way that you want to save that money, save the taxes, and also get the performance. I don't think we can beat that drum any harder. Yeah, what I think is beautiful is, do you know how many years or how often the index matches the performance of the index? Every single year. Yeah. It's that easy. Yeah. Why try that guess, play that guessing game trying to get into that 13%? when you can just participate in the 87%.